again, you know, I mean, after yesterday's talk, I'm surprised to see so many people coming by, back. So it's, it's, it's good, good to have you all here. Thanks for getting up early and coming out for the second day. I really appreciate that as well. Um, I'm completely unprepared for this talk, so we're just going to have to have fun with this. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the room is set up. Uh, I had a couple of thoughts about how to how to um, liven it up a little bit. And the room is set up almost ideally for what I'd like to do. Just out of curiosity, how many people are musicians, whether it's, you know, amateur or... or oh, yes. <laughs> this is awesome. Great. Fantastic. So, so be prepared. <clears throat> We're going to play. Um, um, hang on a second. There we go. Whoa. Oh. Okay, so I'm calling this the elephant talk um, uh, uh, <clears throat> because there's just so much we have to do in terms of basic uh, communications applications. So I'm, I'm, in, in many ways, I'm aiming this at uh, Reflective Ventures and Pythia uh, uh, because there's... <laughs> um, and, 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 and most of this is, is just common sense in terms of the applications that we need to build. But it's also not just... Uh, um, Reflective in Pythia, but anybody who's interested in building applications on top of the platform. Um, and you can kind of almost, it's like there's a, there's a, there's a blueprint in the sky, right? If, if it really is the case that we're going to have to, um, uh, how do I say, well, you know, what if, what if, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson is right and there's going to be uh, some significant change to our infrastructure. <laughs> Um, what, what would, what would we, what services would you want to pres preserve? Like what, like you, you go through your day right now and what would you like to make sure doesn't go away if there was some massive change? Well, for me, it's pretty obvious at, at, at a very minimum, I need all the point to point communication stuff that's going on right now that I rely on every day, um, to still be there. And this works whether or not there's massive uh, uh, climate change, right? Because as we've already seen, um, when you have centralized service providers, you know, there can be all kinds of shenanigans, games, things that we don't like. So I'd really, really like there to be a bunch of decentralized uh, email services, right? I'd really, I mean, it's just, this is a no-brainer. <laughs> it should just be happening. Um, and we can make it happen if we have a platform that's, you know, uh, moving at the speed that our chain is, is, is going to be moving at. Um, uh, you know, also, we'd really, really like to have uh, chat, messaging. Um, how about video? Um, how about, uh, you know, video conferencing and, and, uh, and um, uh, 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 audio, all that kind of stuff, right? So all the point-to-point -point stuff. Um, we, we can also kind of take a step back, and before we take a step back, just as a, as a, as a, to begin again with this talk, can everyone take a moment and just put a little bit of attention on the soles of your feet? Whatever that means for you. For me, it's like feeling the presence of life in the soles of my feet, right? And then another, take another moment and bring just a little bit of attention to the top of the head. And, and now just a little bit of attention to what's in between. Awesome. I don't know if it's just me, but I felt a change in the room. So, so, so I want to take a step back and say that the communication applications can actually be organized um, in three sort of obvious levels, right? So the first level, which I was talking about, is the point-to-point -point stuff. And really, what I mean by point-to-point -point is individual agent to individual agent, right? Person to person kinds of communications. But um, since, as, as I mentioned yesterday, our, 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 our constitutions acknowledge this, <laughs> then there are also these, these things called collective agencies. Um, 
Uh, and, uh, and so what we'd like is to also have communication from individual to collective, right? And, and probably most of what I want to talk about uh, sits in there because I believe that there's uh, a big, um, there's a, a big opportunity that's easily identifiable. And I think once, once you see the opportunity, it, again, it will be like, you know, I'm just, I'm just tossing out a seed and, and you guys could do things with it that I could never even imagine, right? So that, there's that one. And then out beyond that, there's collective to collective. So I, I'd really like to, um, to and, and that's where I'm hoping we can, we can play a few games uh, together. Um, so uh, let, me, let me advance the slides. <laughs> There we go. So we talked about that. Um, <clears throat> so there's the, 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 the first of the kinds of uh, individual to collective, I think we have a lot of experience with. All right, this is effectively broadcast media. We, 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 we know and, and we have, and, and broadcast media has been reimagined uh, multiple times in the last uh, decade or so. Right, so, so, you know, there's the old style broadcast media, whether it was, um, you know, the New York Times or CNN, right? That's kind of an old style broadcast media. Um, but there's, a, there's another uh, uh, class of broadcast media that has emerged uh, in the last decade, right? So um, it's not just the, the YouTube, <laughs> the YouTubes of the world, but also things like Facebook are really kind of a broadcast, right? You have one person publishing to a feed that many, many people consume. So we, we can see a lot of the social media as a kind of broadcast media. And so, uh, again, from my point of view, I really would like to have a bunch of decentralized, publicly owned, publicly operated versions of these kinds of services. Um, and and I, I think that could, you know, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. It's a lot of work. Right? Anyone who wants to take on doing a social media kind of application on top of our chain, man, that's a big hill to climb. Uh, <laughs> that, um, but, but it can be done. It's just engineering, right? Um, and and, and like there's, there's, there doesn't have to be uh, super rocket science to get that done. It's really just us having the will to get this done, right? But, but there's some more exciting stuff from my point of view, that has to do with us being able to coordinate ourselves um, in new ways. And, and I, I just wanted like a two-syllable name for this. So I came up with the idea of Loopcast. Probably you guys have a much better name for this uh, than, than, I, than I have. And I'm going to talk about it just in, in terms of a couple of applications that I've imagined for a very long time. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story of this. Um, uh, whoops. Uh, the, the, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, these are the uh, the collective properties of of Loopcast. Um, the idea is that all of the participants in a Loopcast style uh, communication event can see the global state of something. Um, and I'll, I'll give you examples of this, and they can take small actions. So their small actions affect a tiny portion of the global state, and it's only through collective action that you see sea changes in the global state. Right, so this, so it's, 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 it's really, nobody's in charge, <laughs> um, and think global, act local, made manifest. So here's, here's uh, one example, which I, I have sometimes called Pixillion. And I came upon this after getting back from Senegal. Um, I, I had studied West African drumming in Senegal. And uh, I, I, was, I was astounded and amazed uh, in many ways um, about uh, my shift in understanding of music. Uh, the experience that I had in Senegal was that music wasn't divided into producer and consumer. Music was literally the glue that held the community together, 
Um, and uh, it was used to communicate from village to village. The sabar drumming, which is what I studied, was used to communicate from village to village, which means it gets very loud. <laughs> um, but also, uh, it's, it, it, it's used to heal uh, the sick. Um, it's used for festival. It's used for, uh, for weddings and all kinds of celebration. Uh, music really is the glue uh, of community. And... And the thing that's so amazing about it is that the complexity, the satisfying soul healing complexity of the West African musics is, is in the ensemble, the sound of the ensemble. Any village idiot like myself can hold down any one of the parts. But the music, the, 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 the voice of the music arises in the combination of all the voices. And it's, 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 it's amazing. It's remarkable to be a part of that. And, and, and in this way, uh, uh, there's this, this is quality that I'm talking about. Everybody who's participating in the drumming can hear the whole drumming, right? Um, uh, but they're playing their one part, their one little imbalach, right? Or, or their, their, their one, uh, one little uh, pattern. And, and it makes this, this, uh, this sound that coordinates the whole group. Uh, it turns out that there are, ma there are uh, um, uh, uh, how do I say, it, there are many different levels of participation. Like one of the things that happened to me, which was just mind blowing, I was, I was, I was in a circle, and instead of playing sabar, we were playing djembe. And I was, I was studying with this, uh, this drum master, he was incredible. And we were going around doing solos. When it came time for the drum master to do the solo, I was listening to this. I was listening to these blistering runs. They were going, Brrrm. and I was, I was watching his hands, and they were going. And I was like, how does this work? How is he doing this? And then it dawned on me. I went, poof. He can place a note 132nd in front of that person's note or a 64th note behind that person's note. So he knows the whole pattern. He can hear the whole pattern. And he's making decisions about when to place his note relative to all the other, all the other beats that are happening. And so with just the minimal sort of Tai Chi master style effort, right, he's getting his blistering runs, right? So, so there's the, within this kind of framework where, again, no one's in charge, people can participate at all levels of mastery and skill. So I was sitting outside one of the caf little uh, cafeteria areas in Microsoft, and I was thinking about this experience. And I, I imagined to myself, well, how would I do that? How would I translate this to the graphical world? How would I, how would I move it over into onto the internet using graphics? And I said, well, what if I just had this grid? Okay, just so all the users in the application they log into this page. And, and what do they see? They just see a square grid. Of course, the, the, the point when I need the image. <laughs> um, okay, so like that, you know, a square grid like that. And then users have, you know, they control these big blocky pixels. And you kind of need big blocks, blocky pixels because you have this n squared phenomenon going, right? <laughs> so if you have a 10 by 10 grid, that's 100 players in this game. Um, so it's, it's, you, you can reduce the number of players by making the pixels bigger. Um, and then all they can do is change one pixel and message the other players. That's it. Now, um, I thought about this in 1999, uh, I think was when I f conceptualized this. In 2009, I told a developer about it. Um, and he was so excited about this, this idea um, that he went and implemented it and used Twitter as the message passing capability. Uh, this developer was Hispanic, and so a bunch of his friends were Hispanic. So he told them about it. This is after just a couple of hours of hacking. And they all started playing it. And within a few hours, with no one in charge, they drew the Mexican flag. 
Okay, so to me, this is, this is evidence, anecdotal evidence, that this kind of thing has some significant power, that, and, and it connects to this, this, this other hypothesis that I've been making about, about how, how we do this. So I have gathered lots and lots of anecdotal evidence of this kind. Um, uh, I understand that uh, other people have begun to have this idea. And uh, like, for example, I understand that there's a subreddit banner that uh, where where the pixels are controlled by the by the participants. Um, uh, likewise, Primavera de Filippi did something very similar. When I described this idea to her, she said, "Well, guess what? What I did." And she had put up a I can't remember the name of the application right this minute, but she had put up basically uh, um, an internet uh, uh, etch a sketch. Right, so users can go into this uh, this web page and just draw whatever they want. And, but it stays there, and so so people can draw on top of other people's drawings, or embellish other people's drawings, or erase what other people have drawn. Um, and and what 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 she did was to collect videos. She left it up for running for years, and then and then she co collected the videos of of how this 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 um, sort of internet graffiti thing uh, changed. And it is astounding. Uh, it is an insight into our human creativity at, at, a, at a completely different level, a completely different scale. And so I want to I want to suggest to you that we need lots and lots of games like this. Uh, another example. Is. Um, is, is you, you just take the same idea, but you apply it back to audio, right? So imagine that you've got you've got a loop, right? It's it's looping, and people can add in samples, uh, tracks into the loop, right? And 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 you can you can you can make this as expansive or as as restricted as you want, and 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 tune these parameters, and and now you've got a piece of music that that nobody's in charge of. Uh, how many people were at the governance forum? Okay, so probably many of you had a chance to see the guitar circle, uh, uh, the Seattle guitar circle. So that's the kind of thing that we do live, right? Nobody's in charge of the circle. Everybody's listening, right? And the, the music is what coordinates us and harmonizes us. And I believe that this is the kind of thing that we have to tap into if we're going to be able to coordinate at the scope and scale that's necessary uh, uh, to, to get where we need to go. So, so I just want to stop, stop here and pause and check and see. Do you understand the, the principle of Loopcast? Yeah? Okay. Awesome. So I'll, I'm now going to just dive in and, and try, try this out, just with some simple, simple stuff, okay? So, so can I get nine people, eight people up here, because I'll participate. Can I get eight people up here? Who wants to come? Don't be shy. Come on, come on. This is your chance. Where 
can bring part of our attention to the surface of the skin, even to the angle and the weight and the texture of the paper, and the temperature of the paper. <laughs> you have the impulse. Very good. You didn't listen. <laughs> no, but that's 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 exactly that's exactly how do we how do we do to listen to more to listen with more of ourselves? Okay, let's try it again. We'll get that let's get it a flow going. And then let's see what happens. <laughs> awesome. So we'll let that go. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So, so the next level up. Uh, a, a few things about that. A, a few things about those kinds of coordination techniques. Um, one is that you can immediately hear the coherence of the group, right? You just listen to the clap going around, or you listen to the note going around, and already you know how much of the group is present. Okay? So, and, and it's evident to everyone. There's no, it's, it's an objective phenomenon. It's not, it's not a subjective phenomenon. Everyone can hear the presence of, and coherence of the group. Right? The other aspect of this technique, which is amazing to me, is that it's not just a measuring device. It's also a means by which we can improve our collectivity, our attention, and our capacity. If you work at circulation, uh, especially if you work at it with, with other things, like for example, if you, if you play a single note on an instrument like a guitar, you can take this incredibly far. There are all kinds of games you can play. So there are structured games which developers would like and mathematicians like. For example, you can skip two, go back one, skip three, go back two, and so on. We recently, the Seattle Circle recently did a video 
in which we explored the nature of seven. So we did first we did something which is based on a Sufi tradition, uh, uh, sometimes known as the Mevlevi greeting. Uh, in the Mevlevi greeting, each, each participant in the circle um, greets all the others, right? And then you pass it on, and then they greet all the others, right? So it becomes beautiful if you arrange this over a scale, right? You can actually hear the, a different uh, aspect of the quality of the scale. And then what we did was... Um, um, <clears throat> uh, these patterns that would then, like the Mevlevi greeting, rotate. So the first time was, um, say, it began with me, then it would go around the circle, and, and instead, of, uh, instead of me playing the last note, it skips over and rotates, right? So if you have seven players, the first player up through the seventh player, then you begin at two, go to six, then you begin at three, and so on. Does that make sense? Right, so you're ro rotating through the circle, All right? So and then you can skip skip one, right? So if you if you've arranged it through a scale, now you're playing the 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 the, uh, the standard chords through the scale. Then you can skip two, right? Now you're playing instead of thirds, you're playing fourths, uh, and and you can rotate all the way through. The video will be available at some point, so you can you can watch this and see it. It's filmed from above the group. Um, so it gives you all kinds of information uh, about the group, but it also increases your capacity. The kind of attention required both within the individual and within the collective to do this is dramatic. We've done it for as many <laughs> as 11, <laughs> um, uh, uh, where, where, it's, uh, where we have the pace of the passing of notes pretty high. So you can imagine what that does. But you can go much further. Uh, uh, um, the Seattle Circle had a performance group called Tuning the Air. Uh, and we, we used circulation to arrange pieces. For example, we did a Bach prelude and fugue, in which we had the bass line circulating to the left and the, the other voice circulating to the right. And we put the audience in the middle. All right, so the point of this with respect to games and governance and applications that we might build on our chain is beginning to tap into this capacity to measure and improve the collective. And it doesn't have to be, uh, so I, and, and I, wanna, I wanna contrast this to uh, systems like voting, right? So oh, as I tried to suggest yesterday, voting is like binary, and we need higher level languages. We need expressive languages between the collective and the individual. Is this making sense? It, 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 okay, awesome. So, so now we move on to the, the next part of the talk, which is collective to collective. And again, I have no clue what I'm doing here. Um, but but let, let's try something. Let, let's have some fun with this. So the room is nicely organized with this, this split down the middle. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest <laughs> exceptionally comfortable with counting to three. Okay, so let's have this side of the room. We're going we're gonna to clap on the one of three. Yeah? And, and, and we want you to be our, our, our warm, loving, receptive audience. Okay, so you're, you're listening to the quality of three that's going to emerge from this side. And three has a very specific quality. You know three, you know it in your bones. Okay, so let, let's listen with attentive and loving ears for the three that's going to emerge from this side of the house. Okay? And it's important not to speed up. Excellent, excellent. So now we're going to add another technology, another coordination technology to that same thing. Okay? So, so remember how we had this idea of bringing part of the attention to the source. So now I'm going to suggest that we bring 
heart of our attention to our right hand. From the shoulder all the way out through the fingertips. Okay? And you guys can help, even though you're not clapping. You're listening, and you're not just listening with your ears, you're listening with your whole body. In particular, you're listening with your right hand. The feeling quality in your right hand. Now, after the first three, we're then going to listen with our right hand. And so we're going to bring the feeling of life from the hip joint all the way out through the right hips. That's the second three. Yes? After that, we're going to do the same thing, okay? but we're going to do it from the left hip joint out to the left hips. And that's the third three. And then the fourth three, we're going to listen with the left arm. Right? All the way up. So let's practice that without the Do that one more time. You were great. It's <laughs> awesome. Incredible. Okay. So again, one. Right arm. Two. Three. You ready? Now we're going to combine. Okay. So here. One. guys are amazing. amazing. Now it's your turn. So, with the same spirit of love and attentiveness, we're going to be listening to them demonstrate the quality of cool. Yes? Right? So, so you guys know what it feels like. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Maybe this is something that we know because we can love. So, Let's, let's do that. And we'll begin. It's important we have to speed up. do the same thing, okay? But there's something a little interesting about this. Okay, so we'll begin listening with the right hand. Right, and then we'll listen with the left right, and then we'll listen with the left right, and then we'll listen with the left right. Four. Now, the mathematician who will already start to notice hmm, something's interesting. Yeah? Okay, so so let, let's do that. And and you can help, right? So you're 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 listening not just with your ears to the quality of four that's present in this group that wants to be manifest in this group. You're you're listening also with your bodies. Right? And that's supporting the quality of four that wants to come through this lovely group. So here we go. Ready? Okay? So, and we want the rotation of limbs to be going on. Now, the interesting thing is, if you've noticed, that your limbs are going to be rotating at a different speed than your limbs are going to be rotating. So that rotation of limbs 
is going to hopefully support the little thing that should be created, the little melody that should be created in, in the two minutes of logic. So let's, let's, let's try it. Okay? So here we go. We'll have the threes begin, and then I'll come over and help out with, with the fours begin. Okay? All right. So we'll give them how many? About four threes, and then we'll, we'll begin with the fours. Does anybody know what this sounds like ahead of time? That you do. <laughs> so there's a, there's a phrase, pass the goddamn buck. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> well, if, if you, you, you might hear it emerging as the two groups talk to each other. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, go. Okay, now let's swap. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. Okay, all right, so, so threes, show the fours your fourness. Okay? All right, let, let, let's do it. All right, one, two, ready, go. Here we go. Awesome. Now give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much. So, so when you can let go of the counting and you listen to the, the, the conductor or the music inside, then something else can happen. You begin to have enough attention so that you can listen to the conversation. And that's, that's what I was trying to talk about before with, with the Senegalese music. By the way, a lot of the West African music is organized in 12. So you get these, these kinds of funny plays, funny games with three and four. You can take this very, very far. How many people listen to King Crimson? <laughs> so they, they do this with five and seven, <laughs> you know, seven and 11. Oh my goodness. Um, um, but I, I just want to say that there's a lot of principles here. Um, that have to do with conducting oneself and the relationship between conducting oneself and conducting one's self. That, that somehow these two are related. And in many ways they are the same. The landscape I experience here is somehow the same as the landscape I experience here. Um, and, and I believe that, that this is objective and that we can begin to build applications that help us get there, that help us coordinate in these new ways, right? And, and what I, rather than to try to tell you a bunch of technology or, or, or visions of technology, I wanted you to have an experience of what that might be like. Right? That's, that's, what, that's, that's why to participate in these games. And, and then, finally, what I'd like to do is to invite you to play. Right? That's, that's how we learn. So with that, thank you very much.
Any questions? Actually, it's more like an observation slash question. Awesome. Um, so with coordination, it can be challenging. And uh, like we, when it comes to like wanting to coordinate, you always have someone to actually help with that coordination. For example, you know, just now you were helping us with that coordination. And also like you, you see like a, in a football team, you get the couch, uh, the coach, and in an uh, in orchestra, you get the orchestrator or whoever, the, the guy who does that. But conductor. Yes, conductor, sorry. And uh, so you foresee the blockchain taking that role, basically, to help coordinate. So as a conductor, blockchain would be like a conductor or like a coach. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really blunt. Um, I, I see that blockchain is more like um, the skeletal system. Uh, possibly, possibly the circulatory system, but maybe not. Um, uh, no, I, 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 first of all, I, I apologize if I gave you any indication that, uh, um, that I believe there has to be a conductor. Uh, I, I, uh, what I was trying to, to present in the governance forum uh, was lots and lots and lots of examples of leaderless coordination. Um, the blockchain is a technological version of this, but it can happen. And, and uh, what, what's, what's, uh, I was only trying to convey quickly a bunch of techniques. Um, but if you begin to explore them, uh, and, you, and you, you have to put time. The Seattle Circle has been working together for over 20 years. And, and, and it takes a lot of work to get to this point where you have this experience of what it's like to participate and be responsive to the collective intelligence. Um, you know, the, I, I, I don't want to sound woo-woo, but in my experience, consciousness, for example, is not something that I have. It's something that I participate in. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's like a group <laughs> that I joined. <laughs> um, this, the same with conscience. Conscience is not is not something that I have, it's something that I participate in. And, and when I'm participating in conscience, it becomes a lot easier to, to conduct myself <laughs> and, and to allow myself to be conducted by something larger than myself. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so just to reiterate, basically you join a group that's already coordinated and through that coordination you'll be able to adapt to that coordination and become part of that group um that's that's a first approximation what i'm what i'm trying to say is that the coordination evolves and emerges it's self-organizing i, I mean <laughs> No, no one uh, was directing the trees to differentiate themselves in the way that they did. It was the, they were self-organized. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, literally, there's so many examples of self-organization out in the natural world that it, it, if you go for a walk every day in nature, you have tons and tons of experience with this. Yeah. Cool. Thank you Thanks. so much. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so thanks, Greg. Like, I found this very interesting ooh, because in part, in some of my other work, I've been doing live action role play and thinking a lot about how LARP and kind of technological training can be combined. So I was wondering if you thought about kind of extending this um, into a longer form, like role play of sorts that would help with um, our chain dev and this kind of thing. Oh, I, I, I'm so glad you, you suggested that. I mean, one of the things I think we have this remarkable opportunity uh, to do, um, and I've been thinking about this for almost 10 years now, is um, the role of theater in community. Like, like imagine if, you, if, if in the town hall, people could step into an improv, right? They just, they, I'm going to be the mayor today. 
right? And, and then they adopt that role of the mayor, right? And, and, and other people say, you know, I'm going to be that councilman that is just always up in the mayor's face, right? And then they, they, they get a chance to step into someone else's shoes and to feel what it's like to play out those roles. And then they have an experiential basis for compassion, yeah? And I think that these, these kinds of tools and techniques are essential. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we, again, when theater becomes producer-consumer, you know, Hollywood, $150 million market, we forget the healing quality of theater and drama. So yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry, this, this question that came up uh, earlier, I think it was a really good one. Um, humanity has shown to be not very good at self-organizing, if you look at the history, right? They tend to try to want somebody to help lead. Um, so I think as, even if we look at your, uh, uh, your circle, and I haven't been at the governance meeting, so I'm just hearing about it now, it seems there was somebody who set up the concept, somebody who's organizing when you're meeting, and the structure by which you start to get to play. So I think there needs to be kind of a combination of both, where there is an entity that helps put the structure and the framework and everything in place. And I think it goes beyond just technology and having a platform. I think there has to be something, some form of entity that really shepherds it in the, in the right way for the common good. Like, do you think that that shepherd is the most important role, or is it just another role within the group? Um, probably another role in the group, but the group has to kind of, or I suspect the group, if it doesn't like how that role is played, would like to have an influence in who's going to play that role. Right? So now we're going to governments, and um, so I was just as I was just thinking about it. I'm not, I'm not sure that. The self-organizing principle is going to work. I think people want to collaborate, but I think there needs to be an entity that helps people collaborate. So it's just a thought. So I personally think that, I don't know, leader of a group, to, to say that this leader is not part of the group is kind of weird to me. I think any person if it is a leader, it's just one other role of the group. And I think you can look at uh, at how, how bees organize themselves. Uh, like certain type of bees, they are bigger than others. And then there come other bees and they see that, that this is the queen bee and they just evolve around them. But it doesn't mean that this queen bee is, is, is not part of the group. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should look from kind of bird's eye view on, on, on this group and if you look from within the group then maybe it looks like the leader is, is not part of the group but if you're looking from a higher level up then I, I think that you will observe that that this leader is as much part of the group as any other person. Yeah, I, I agree with that fully and, and <clears throat> to the book that Greg just recommended to me, Stealing Fire, uh, the Navy SEALs say that the leader is the person that knows what to do next. Right, so in this situation, we all agreed to this collective purpose. We're going to do this um, musical exercise. Greg knows what to do next. He facilitated it. Therefore, he led in that situation. But he's not necessarily the person that caused the collective group to form. He's simply the one that knows what to do next. And he might not always be the one who knows what to do next as well. And maybe he is a collection of three people or four people who decide what to do next. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think we saw a demonstration of that when somebody decided they wanted to clap in another direction. It, it may not have went to its you know, completion, but we saw an example of what that would look like. Yeah, I just want to um, put on the uh, thing that Rinke put on. Um, I think the many problems we have today become uh, are just a result of the phenomena that our leaders are just so disconnected from the group. So that's, uh, we should, we can use this to work on that. that. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think that necessarily 
comes from um, the collective agreement more so than like the like the idolization of the of the label or the whatever that triggers like this sheep type of mentality, right? So if we just assume that label X is who we follow, then we fall into that trap. But if we all are continually revising our collective agreement, then that's what guides us. Just one, one short uh, remark. W what was your name, please? Robert. It can be like almost um, overwhelming to, to uh, I know where you're like um, the shepherd thing, um, but we as the humans, we not exist in a, in, a, in a vacuum. We have traditions. And like Christianity, and if you look like the concept of the shepherd and the herd, how this is put into religion and how this, the influence of uh, religion into society is profound. And even if you're not a religious person, you grew up in a society and so you are exposed to traditions. And to get away from that or to reflect on that, it's really difficult to do that. Because uh, then you're building, yeah, it's difficult to do that. Yeah, that's... Yes, yes, yes. But, but uh, I think the point where, uh, what Greg and, and um, so what, what we are trying to do is just to think about what are our traditions and in what way are they just um, influencing our uh, capacity to self-organize. So I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate, advocate here. Um, when it comes to our principles of organization and, and this, this dream that we're buying into with the blockchain solving all of these problems that we have of coordination and, and, and radically moving in a different direction in a society, it, it, I really like that dream and I really want it to happen, but if we look at how the space has developed so far, it hasn't been very inclusive. Uh, we're not at a very diverse group of people that are in this room right now. And if we talk about capital in terms of um, being something that uh, organizes people and, and we want it to be uh, more decentralized than, than it is right now, then the blockchain doesn't seem to decentralize capital very well uh, as it exists right now. So the question uh, becomes how do we make the dream not only be this motto by which a bunch of uh, white men get rich by, but also something that does foster the inclusion and the um, the, the uh, diversity that we would like to see. To, to continue a bit uh, about that, we're trying to make blockchain uh, a representation of society. And because of that, I also think that the problems we see in society will also come back on the blockchain. And how are we going to prevent that? So well, I, I really, first of all, I, I welcome the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for playing that role. It's, it's a wonderful role to play. And, and I think what I've tried to say is I don't see the blockchain as the solution. I see the blockchain as one tiny portion of what we have to do. What I've been trying to say is there are all these other things and there are all these other technologies that have actually been sort of woven throughout uh, history that are available to us um, and have been available to us. Actually, I would, I, would, I would submit if you go look at your present moment carefully, you'll find that they've been available to you for a long time. Um, but we have to become present to them. So the blockchain is, 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 not, is not the answer. <laughs> it's not the silver bullet or the panacea. But there are some things that, that can help us and, 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 and give us some guidance. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with all this good discussion afterward. And um, so I, I just want to say um, that um, yeah, blockchain is, is not the answer, but it, it's going to be the most powerful uh, tool that we have to introduce the possibility of redesigning society. And it's just really important that we don't underestimate the immense gravity of that and not to underestimate the 
immense subtlety and, and complexity of that and um, not oversimplify um, issues. And um, like, for example, uh, yeah, so I'm also playing a little bit of devil's advocate here because I, I think the analogy with nature and, and collectives in which, um, so I know, I know you weren't talk well, so I think, um, I think spirit is higher than nature and it's doing something uh, even deeper and more important and um, more difficult. And communities still have to differentiate themselves to gain their efficacy. And, um, and so that it's not um, like our chain would not exist if it weren't for you. I mean, we wouldn't have just um, self-organized and, and made our chain. Um, so I just, yeah, I definitely agree with the idea, the idea that it takes both, um, both sides. And, um, nowadays we can't be misled too much by the fact that a lot of, there's a lot bad with current governments and then just, um, think of it, think of hierarchical systems as, as negative. Um, and, um, I didn't plan how to say it all well, but I, we definitely need both. Um, I know what time it is, but I would like to yield that time.